A technique that's missed a lot of times that guys just that are fishing deep water don't really look to is a big worm, a 10 inch worm. And it's funny because it's kind of gravitated through a lot of the southern impoundments, but in, in reality, it's probably a really good secret yet in the north. And one of the things I think is really important is there's little tricks that you can use to rig that 10 inch worm. I, I think a good variety of colors, depending on water color and some of those kind of things are important to have. I happen to like the Zoom Old Monster, it's one of my favorites. And the main reason for that, it's been around, it's a mainstay, it catches big fish. But a 10 inch worm, one of the big advantages is it's 10 inches, it's a big worm and you usually catch bigger fish on it, just like you do a jig or other type baits. It's just a big, big worm. It has a flat side on it. I like rigging it with the hook in the flat side. I'll show you how to do that. Very important, but it really kicks off a lot of pressure waves. There's a lot of pressure waves that come off that tail. Plus, it gives a lot of flash. You can see by that tail, it's a ribbon type tail and it gives a lot of pressure waves, especially designed for that. There's a bunch of hooks to use. This is a round bend. This is a, an offset. As you can see, it's an offset hook, but I do not like this for this type of application. I like a straight shank hook. Another thing that's a, a neat technique before I rig, another thing is sometimes you can just bite this worm off. If the head gets tore up, the fish has eaten it a couple times, you can bite it off and still have plenty of worm. Even if you bit it off to here, you still have plenty of worm. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna rig this. I typically will peg this, this uh, worm. Sometimes I won't. In particular, in deeper water, I don't like to because it allows the worm to chase behind the, the weight, just much like a Carolina rig. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take, we're gonna take this and we're gonna put our weight on. I typically use a half ounce or three eighths and sometimes I'll even use heavier than a half ounce. Just thread that worm on or that weight on, get my straight shank offset, put it on and I, I typically go with my, my same, same old line tie which is, means I'm going to use a San Diego jam knot, that's my favorite knot. And basically what you do with that is you just tie that, go around several times. About five or six is usually the norm. And then punch it right back through. Key here is you don't want to burn the line. So when you punch this back through, you're going to grab that, grab that line and you're going to pull it so it's just taut. You can see that's sticky. That's a sticky hook. That's the kind you want. And what you do is you just pull it so it's taut, wet it, and then you pull it down. And that you will not break that knot. That's a knot you can tie on braid, you can tie it on mono, you can tie it on everything else. We'll leave the tag on. Oh, there's a pair of scissors. Good rapala scissors there. A lot of good colors. I like plum real well. Uh, blueberry's good. There's all kinds of different colors. June bug can be good at times. It really depends on let the, let the fish tell you what they want. I always rig it on the flat side. A lot of guys will change up and rig it on the back side. I like the flat side. You just rig it down to the bend, put it in the center of the hook, rig it down to the bend, punch it out, push it all the way down to the offset, make sure that it's nice and straight, and then I just punch it back into the worm. The worm's pretty thin, and you want that thing to be as straight as you possibly can get it. So when you've got your weight on it, you've got your weight on it, that's gonna hang pretty straight. And I'll even adjust it there because that needs a little bit of adjustment. But it's, it's just straight as you can get it because when it comes through the water, you want that fish to have that, be, that bait to look natural. Then you make a lo good long cast with it. I always use a seven foot rod or longer because I'm short. I want to make sure I have a, a longer rod so I can set the hook. And uh, that's, your, that's your bait that will catch big fish in deep water, typically during the summer months and into the fall. One of the things about throwing a 10 inch worm I think is critical is you gotta let that, the worm fall all the way to the bottom. We'll make a cast here. We're fishing out, out off the bank quite a distance. And it's important to make sure that that worm goes all the way to the bottom. And I'm fishing in pretty windy conditions today and uh, you'd like it, you like it to be able to reach the bottom so you can feel it. And I'm using a half ounce weight and uh, <clears throat> that's what happens right there with a 10 inch worm. Get out off the bank a little bit, get them up on the, off the bank and you can catch one on a 10 inch worm just like that. Big baits are critical, and you can see this isn't a real big fish, about a pound and a half, or, but they like big baits, and they like a big worm in particular in the summertime and late fall. 
So what you want to do is you want to be able to get that big worm out there, let it fall all the way to the bottom, and then work it back slowly. And it, what you'll find out is when it falls, a lot of times when you get bit, and that's the key to catching those fish off the, off the, off the ledges. What's cool about fishing a big worm, in my opinion, is it's usually big fish. And what I like to do is you let that worm, when it falls all the way to the bottom, it's pretty versatile. I mean, you can throw a jig, you can throw a lot of different baits, but something about that ribbon tail worm, it's, it's more natural for these fish. And I think a lot of times they'll bite it over uh, any other bait. I mean, whether it's a small creature bait or a big creature bait or anything like that, they'll bite that worm. And the other thing I want to make sure, you're, when you're fishing a ledge, there's sweet spots on a ledge. Typically, a worm will, will be able to be more thorough on that sweet spot. You know, you can fish a whole length of bank, and a lot of times you won't catch fish off of it. And there'll be one or two places that you'll catch them. That's a good place to put a worm in and really soak that worm and let it get down to the bottom and then work it back on that sweet spot. And what I mean by a sweet spot is a place that the fish congregate. And that's what you're looking for. You're looking for that one or two places where the fish will congregate and be able to catch it. When we first pulled up on this spot, one of the things I like to do is scan the water to see if there's any bait fish activity. And if you see gar, or you see bait fish flipping, that's always a good indication that maybe there's some fish here. Because if the food's here, the fish will be here. One of the, one of the big advantages of a worm over a jig or anything else is you don't have an exposed hook. The, the, it's it's tech exposed back into the worm. So when you get on that sweet spot or you get on a stumpy area or even a brush pile, what you find out is, is that that thing will come through it most, most of the time. Probably 90% of the time you can get a worm through it. You may have to hop it through it. You may have to do other things. And the technique, you gotta kinda let the fish talk to you. You gotta let them tell you what they want. When you pull up here and you catch a fish right off the bat and you're swimming the worm back, that might mean that you maybe have to work it a little bit faster. The other thing that's important is that when you're making that cast with that worm, to try to make it so that you've got it in a spot that uh, it's gonna hit the bottom. It's gonna, you know, sometimes you get a bird nest. <laughs> another quick tip, of course your electronics are critical, but another quick tip is look at the bank. Find something on the bank, whether it's a dead tree. We haven't got to have cedar trees here. Look at those cedar trees and when you catch a fish, in your mind's eye, figure out where you were at, what your angle was, what you were looking at, and then be able to position the boat using your color, using your down scan, and then, I mean, down imaging, and then be able to make a cast to the exact location where you caught that last fish. Fish will bunch up, that's what you wanna do. You wanna stay on them, that's the best way to do it. When you set up on a, a ledge, a point, or whatever, sometimes you use depth highlight. And what that tells you by looking at the screen is we've got down imaging on one side to be able to look and see if the fish are below you. Then you've also got color contrast, which allows on this Humminbird 1198, it allows you to stay positioned so you're on the break. It's so critical, as you can see, where that green area is at, it's, it's right on the break. That's where our boat's positioned with the circle. You're setting right on the edge where you need to be to be able to catch more fish. And you can use that on a point, you can use it anywhere. Say we move, let's talk about we're gonna move. We're on this ledge now, we're gonna move. We can leave that set the exact same way. We know the fish are patterning to where they're found at those depths. You might be able to pull up on another spot that looks exactly like it with the same contrast of color and be able to find those fish. So really important feature of Lake Master Maps. It's a really neat deal, but use your electronics. Your electronics are huge if you want to be able to catch fish offshore. There's one. Big worm, 10 inch worm. Off of the edge of off the edge of a drop. Oh, he's a good fish, decent fish. Come on, baby. Oh yeah, you gotta love that. Now, if I was in a tournament, I probably would have had a heart attack. But not in a tournament, you can just hoist them right up on board, and there's what you got right there—a 10-inch worm on ledges, summertime pattern, fall pattern. You can't beat that. Check us out at wired2fish.com.